of TV23's Internet, provided by SWKO Wireless Internet. Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hello, everybody. It is Thursday, May 25th, 2017. This is the real High Plains Today right here on TV23. On today's show, I'm going to be talking to Gina Cash. She is the hospice supervisor with St. Catherine Hospital. We're going to talk about hospice. We're going to talk about a camp they have coming up and just all kinds of stuff. In the meantime, let's look at happenings. A 20-year-old Garden City man was indicted in U.S. District Court in Wichita on charge of possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine. Victor Irigoyen is alleged to have committed the crime on May 4th in Finney County. If convicted, Irigoyen faces a penalty of not less than five years and not more than 40 years in federal prison and a fine of up to $5 million. And a 30-year-old Victoria Carlisle of Liberal has been charged with counterfeiting 50 and $100 bills. The crime is said to have occurred in January of this year in Seward County. If convicted, she faces up to 20 years in federal prison and a fine of up to $250,000. Now, this crime was investigated by the U.S. Secret Service. And a Groover, Texas man entered a guilty plea for unlawful use of a communications facility. Kent Palmer owns a ranch near Groover where he intentionally used a prepaid cell phone to coordinate the delivery of marijuana and the money for a drug trade operation from El Paso. Court documents say that inside a barn located on Palmer's property, they found a ledger that detailed payments and shipments of marijuana for the Reyes drug trade operations for the past two years. Palmer faces up to four years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. Construction continues on US 54's expansion in Seward County. Today's the day with two of the four new lanes completed. Kansas Department of Transportation announced that traffic will shift to the newly completed eastbound lanes while work continues on the new westbound lanes. Oh yeah, Road O will now be open to the south of 54. The project is expected to be completely done in July. And the three-day weekend, those traveling for Memorial Day can expect to see a small increase in gas prices from recent weeks leading up to and on Memorial Day. According to AAA Kansas, today's national average is $2.37 a gallon. Now that's three cents more than a week ago, seven cents less than a month ago, but nine cents more than a year ago. I hope you kept up with all that. That all according to the AAA. The increases are likely to result the result of rising demand and crude oil prices. At least 36 states saw prices increase this week. Now this year, 39.3 million people are expected to be traveling in the west, north, central region, which covers Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Minnesota, South Dakota, and North Dakota, as well as Nebraska. So if you're taking off for the weekend, please be careful. All right, coming up on the weather, it's going to be toasty today. We're going to get up into the 90s, a little sunshine tomorrow. Also, but we do have a chance of severe weather rolling in on Friday into Saturday. We'll be back with the weather right after this. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. Take your internet by the reins. Pioneer Communications offers blazing fast speeds up to 50 meg. Make slow internet a thing of the past and sign up for faster internet today. Pioneer Communications, your community connected.
Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Just think, what if we didn't have local TV and radio? Where would I go for local sports, local politics, a mayor, city council, stuff that affects me every day? How about health? Who's covering things that endanger my family? I need to know now, as it happens, from sources I trust, people in my community. No agenda, no bias like you find on cable and social media. Just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local station. Text TV to 52886 today. Local weather forecast for the High Plains. All right, as we look off to the northeast on the TV 23 Tower Cam, looking over Sublette High School. You know what? It's awful nice. It's awful sunny out there. It's going to stay that way, but we are going to heat up. Right now, 75 degrees at the station. Relative humidity is 48%, so yeah, it's not a bad hair day for me. Wind is out of the south at 10. Barometric pressure is falling. Look at the temperatures around the region. Everybody in the 70s, well, Pratt coming in at 63, but you can see it's starting to heat up down in the southwest already. Lamar, Elkhart, Guyman, and Periton already into the 80s. Looking at the current dew points, everybody in the 40s and 50s, so everybody's about that 45, 50% humidity range. Okay, now winds out there. Everybody is out of the westerly dire direction, except you get clear over here around Pratt and Medicine Lodge, but... A lot of south winds, eh, Lamar, Elkhart, west, northwest, but they'll be shifting around later on today. Looking at the highs and lows as recorded at the Garden City Regional Airport, 76 was the record high, or was the high yesterday, the record 102 in 1967. Ooh, that was toasty. Another overnight low record for this time of year, 35 in Garden City, 37 the old record back in 1979. No new precipitation, but look at that. Year to date, we're well up over eight inches, so that's not too bad. It's pretty green out there. Here's what we got on tap for today. 92 degrees, lots of sunshine. Winds are going to be picking up. You can see they're going to be gusting up into the mid-20s, but they will be pretty much out of the south. Tonight, 56 degrees. Winds will lay down a little bit. They'll be out of the south about 10 to 11 miles an hour. A few clouds overnight, but not too bad. All right, here's where it comes in. 20% chance of precipitation tomorrow, but that's going to most likely happen late in the afternoon into the evening hours. Some of these could have a potential to be severe. A little bit of convection going on out there. 80, the high tomorrow. Winds are going to be out of the north, shifting around to the east as this front comes in. Then tomorrow night, chance of rain still hanging around. 20% chance, 57, the overnight low. Winds are still going to be out of the easterly direction. Now, some of these are going to hang around until Saturday. You can see we still have a 30% chance. But look at Sunday and Monday for the rest of your three-day weekend. Really mild temperatures in the 70s. Then we get back into that, you know, about every five to six days, we're going to have another storm front coming through this time of year. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, we do have another chance of precipitation rolling this way. But look at that. The highs in the 70s, overnight lows in the 50s. You can't beat that. That's not too bad. That is a look at the weather. Be back with the markets and Gina after this. Hi, Chris Stuhl, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV 23. We talk about news. We talk about sports. We talk about weather. We're even going to talk entertainment. We'll have live guests right here on set with me. So every day at noon, tune in High Plains Today. We'll see you then. Weekdays here on TV 23. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent, one in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR, 
one in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 88. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Community mental health centers have individual therapy, couples therapy. They also have medication management services for those individuals that may need that. Mental health is about emotional health and brain health. Healthy children and families and a healthy Kansas. Contact a community mental health center if you or someone you know needs help, counseling, or other support services. Go to acmhck.org to find your local community mental health center. I used to think news is news. It's all the same, but it's not. There's a big difference between local broadcast news and cable news. See, local stations are part of my community, connecting me to local news, weather, and sports on every device. It makes sense. Get the news from the people I trust who actually live here. No agenda, no bias, like on cable, shout shows, or social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local stations. Text TV to 52886 today. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Pat, welcome back. I'm joined in studio today by Gina Cash. She is the hospice supervisor as well as the volunteer and bereavement coordinator. That's right. Get all that right. That is right. <laughs> that was a big title, lady. Good to see you today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Chris. Thanks for coming by. All right, so let's talk a little bit about hospice. And now this is through St. Catherine Hospital in Garden City, right? Yes, we are a department of St. Catherine Hospital. However, we do serve 17 counties out here in southwest Kansas with uh, hospice services. 
Uh, we range from uh, our eastern border being the Gray County up to Hodgman County and then across uh, into the Dighton, Scott City, Leota, Tribune area up against to the Colorado border and then down to the Elkhart, Liberal, Mead uh, area butting up against our southern border with Oklahoma. That, that, that would add up to about 17 counties. That is 17 counties, a big area. <laughs> that is there. a big area. All right, so when you talk about covering these 17 counties, uh, now is all of this pretty much done? Um, when you get into these 17 counties, is a lot of that done as in-home hospice? We do a lot of in-home hospice. We also do hospice in long-term care facilities and in assisted living facilities. Uh, we have uh, contracts with most all of the uh, long-term care facilities here in southwest Kansas. And we go in and we provide hospice services there just like we would in the home. All right. So for somebody who hasn't ever dealt with hospice or no, you've heard the word, give me a quick 411. Hospice is ba-boom. Hospice is services that are provided for the terminally ill. When they have a long-term illness that is in its later stages and the life expectancy is six months or less and they have decided to shift from curative treatment to what they call palliative or comfort care treatment then they would be appropriate for hospice care hospice is going to come in with a team approach of nursing services spiritual care services social work services, volunteer services, and home health aid services to help provide the care for that terminally ill patient, wherever it is they call home. All right, so, but you don't, it, it's not the same plan for everybody, is it? I mean, you customize, if you come in and this person is this or that or whatever, I mean, I'm sure you visit with them and say, all right, what do you need? What, what would you like? That kind of stuff. Right. It is very customized to what that individual needs and what support the family needs. Every situation is different. And we are there to help normalize things as much as we can to make those last days as comfortable as they can be to provide, for, to help them live until the very last moment. That is, is our our goal in fact one of our mot mottos is it's about living hospice isn't about dying it is about living all right so here's one big misnomer though when you think hospice you think elderly not just for the elderly right that is right it is not just for the elderly we have had young people on we have had young children on it is for anybody that has that life limiting illness and their time is short six months or less if that illness or that disease uh, progresses in the normal uh, progression stages. Hmm, okay. Yeah, because, I mean, every time you hear hospice, oh, it's somebody's going into a long-term care facility or whatever, we're going to put them in hospice and, you know, that's it. But, I, I mean, I like your motto because I think a lot of people do, you know, look at hospice and say, oh, yeah, it's for dying people. But that's not truly the case. No, no, that is not. In fact, we see some very beautiful things happen within hospice. We see a lot of these people actually do get better with hospice care. We get in there, we get the pain under control. They're maybe able to get out and go on a short trip uh, where wow. before they were bedridden with excruciating pain. So things like that are are very beneficial to the patient and the family and they give them those memories that you know last forever so is one big problem though with people I mean you know because you think of hospice and you go all right this is the worst this is it it's over I mean you know that's probably what goes through people's minds but you know the time to talk to somebody like you or whomever is not when you have two weeks left Right? Right. In fact, most people will say that we wish we would have called hospice in earlier. And if people would you know, start doing some of that pre-planning when they have a chronic illness and you know, have those honest conversations with their physician and with their family as to what it is they really would like to see as things progress and, and the time gets shorter, it really does make it 
easier for the patient and the family when the time comes that they are hospice appropriate. Because, I mean, along with the grieving and bereavement services that will go along with that and everything else, I mean, you, you can offer counseling as well, right? We can. We have uh, several staff members who can go in and they can help with the counseling. They can help with advanced directives, help with living wills, uh, different things like that. Okay, because we just had, we, I mean, I know... We, we talked, talked about advanced, advanced care yesterday with um, Caroline Crouch from the K-State Extension Service in Scott City. And, you know, you guys can look at things like DNR forms and living wills right. and all that kind of stuff also, right? That is right. We, we can help the family with that. We can help uh, give them more education on what is best for the person and mm -hmm. the family. Okay. All right, now let's switch off a little bit because this really ties in with this whole program because afterwards, now you guys have started offering, and you've done this for several years, um, it's called the Comfort Zone Family Retreat, and you usually have this in the fall. That's right. But Gina will come back and tell <laughs> us about that at a later date. But let's talk a little bit about the Comfort Zone Family Retreat and what it's all about. Okay, the Comfort Zone Family Retreat is a, an extension of our bereavement services. Uh, we have the retreat annually, the third weekend of October, up at Camp Lakeside in Scott City. This is a bereavement retreat that is open to families and individuals who've lost a loved one. They do not have to have been on hospice services. We have seen all different types of death scenarios come through this retreat, from murder, suicide, uh, fetal demise uh, to the long-term deaths that have been on hospice. You name it, they have, we've had it represented. Okay, so it's just not a hospice thing because if you had, say, a child or a loved one, a husband, wife, whatever, killed in an auto accident, you're still going to go through the grieving process, That's right? right? That's right. And what we hope to uh, be able to do for these families and individuals is to help them understand that each person's grief is different, that we all grieve differently, but we want to turn that grief into mourning so that they can move through the grief journey and give them some tools that will help them and their family as they go back home to begin to uh, integrate that loss into their life and to know that yes, things are going to be different, but that their loved one still did matter and will always be a part of them as they continue to live. Right, and, 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 and it helps people to understand that everybody doesn't grieve the same way. That's right. right. Isn't that a biggie? That is a biggie, and that's where a lot of times we get all of this conflict within families because every person's grieving differently, and they might think, well, this person isn't grieving appropriately. They are grieving, but they're grieving in their own way. Yeah, some people are more outward with it, and some people keep it in. Right. And, and they're going to have these little grief blasts or whatever. Uh, okay. Right. All right. Gina, thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me, Chris. And, and you need to come back so we can talk about more about the camp and how you can get registered for that. And if you want to know more about St. Catherine Hospital Hospice Program, you can go to the St. Catherine website, and you can find everything, you, even her phone number and everything's on there. And you can call her and say, Gina, what do I do? Right? We would love to visit with anybody. Right. We will do a consult and help wherever we can. There you go. All right, Gina, thanks. Thank you. Stick around. I'm going to be back with about that much more right after this. Just think, what if we didn't have local TV and radio? Where would I go for local sports, local politics, a mayor, city council, stuff that affects me every day? How about health? Who's covering things that endanger my family? I need to know now as it happens from sources I trust, people in my community. No agenda, no bias like you find on cable and social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local station. Text TV to 52886 today.
uh, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Hey, you know what? This weekend, one of the biggest track meets in the country starts. Class 6A to 1A, they'll be representing their schools at the state track meet. Cessna Stadium, Wichita, America, right there on the campus of Wichita State University. You can't find it, then you've never been to Wichita. All right, this is our last day of school for a couple of months. We are going to be taking some time off. We're going to be making some equipment changes here at the station, putting up some new cameras on some towers and stuff like that. But just remember, when, you, when we come back, say, the end of August, first part of September, we are going to be actively recruiting an account executive that needs to help us with some sales that will help us better our programming and better our program right here. So just remember, KDGL TV 23. We're, we're, we're the good guys. You can find us over the air. We have seven channels if you haven't discovered that. Tell your friends and neighbors about TV 23, and we'll see you back here when the first day of school starts back up. All right, let's take a last look at our weather before we get out of here. 77 degrees now, 48% relative humidity. Winds are out of the south-southeast at 7. They'll be picking up into the 20s today. Barometric pressure is falling. All right, coming to the seven-day. Now, we do have a chance of some severe weather rolling in here tomorrow night into Saturday. Sunday, Monday look good. Tuesday, Wednesday, we may get some more precipitation. All right, go out there. We're going to try it. We're going to work hard over summer break, and we'll see you back here when we get back on the air. up to date with the latest information from TV 23 on our Facebook page, KDGL TV. Horse Thief the Festival, June 9th and 10th. Come for the food. Come for the fun. Come for the music. Mike Ryan, Matt Kimbrough, Flatland Cavalry. Terra Bella and Buckner Creek. Horse Thief the Festival. As much fun as the law will allow. Tickets on sale now at horsethiefthefestival.com.